Today, we are going to be learning how to make AI textures in Blender. To show us how that's done, we have the amazing Andrew Hogue. Enjoy. Today, I'm gonna to give you a quick walkthrough of an incredible tool driven by AI that gives you the ability to utilize stable diffusion within Blender. You can generate seamless textures, concept art, photos, and more. It's called Dream Textures, and it's available on Carson Catrice's GitHub. Sorry if I butchered the pronunciation, Carson. So head over to Carson's GitHub, which I will link in the description below, and you're gonna to wanna to download the release based on your OS. One thing that you also will need to have installed is 7-Zip. So once that's downloaded, let's go ahead and extract that using 7-Zip. So 7-Zip, extract here. And we now have a zip file. So let's go ahead and jump into Blender. We're gonna pull up our preferences head to add-ons and then let's go ahead and hit install and you're going to want to navigate to the zip file so we'll hit install add-on might lock your ui for a minute while everything is getting installed so with that installed you'll see the option to enable the add-on the first thing we're prompted to do is to download the weights from hugging face go ahead and click that and i already have an account set up but just to show you what you'll be prompted with we want to download sdv14.ckpt and this one is about four gigs so the next thing we need to do is place the checkpoint file that we just downloaded into the add-on folder so if you go ahead and hit open target directory select the file that we downloaded from hugging face so let's head back to blender and you can see that the model weights set up successfully I'm going to just close this out and with the add-on installed and set up, we can now start having some fun. This add-on lives in two places. It lives in your image editor in your end panel. So if I pull up my end panel and go to the dream tab, you'll see dream texture. All right. And then we also have it in the shader editor. So in the shader editor, same thing in the end panel, you can see dream textures. So within the image editor, uh, with that end panel pulled up and dream texture selected you're going to see this is where we're going to do all of our prompts set our configuration and even track our history with the ability to recall prompts so let's say i've got a really basic scene set up and i have a floor plane that i want to look like cobblestone so i'll head back over to my image editor and with that dream texture tab open let's go ahead and type in cobblestone street let's just go ahead and use the defaults for now and go ahead and hit generate so you have an info tab here that will give you a quick breakdown of where you are in the process. It does take a little bit to spin up. You know, the nice thing about this plugin is that you're running stable diffusion locally on your machine. So depending on how fast your machine is, it kind of dictates how quickly this stuff uh, completes. But, you know, you're not relying on a third party service. But look at that. That is pretty awesome. I mean, first pass, very basic prompt. You can also head over to the view tab and if i hit repeat image you can see that this is a seamless texture i'm gonna switch here over to my node editor my shader editor and uh, i'm currently editing the material that is on that plane so if i go ahead and add an image texture and if i navigate to this numbered result which is the cobblestones we just made i'm going to just quickly add some mapping to that and if I plug this up to my base color, I am getting that texture on that plane. All right, great. Can we use this to generate maybe a bump map? Let's go ahead and drop a bump node down. Let's plug that into the height, see what this looks like. Maybe a little intense, um, but what I can do is pull these over, maybe drop in a ramp node and I can dial back the seams in between and maybe get a little bit less that top bump and dial down the strength. So now let's go ahead and plug this into the normal and you can see we now are getting some normal map action happening which is great. Now I could take that seed, turn off random seed and only call that seed over and over again if I if I liked sort of the pocket that the AI was working in to generate this texture. But I, I'll just do another random seed. Let's say cobblestone street and worn. Nice, so this is looking pretty good. Um, again, go back to view, hit repeat image. You can see how it's gonna tile. And let's just use this one. Let's call this uh, cobblestone wet. And if we go back to our shader editor, 
then let's just change this to cobblestone wet. Let's drop the displacement. So actually I'll do it here. Um, I'm gonna hit cobblestone wet and here's the two. I'll click that and we'll say cobblestone wet displace. Let's go back into solid and let's do non-color. And now we've updated this to use that new texture. So same deal. Um, go ahead into material preview mode and there it is so the other thing in that displace you can go into the textures for the displace modifier you can go into colors and i'll go to solid so you can see this a little bit better you can actually uh, adjust the brightness and contrast here to get some different results so if i turn the contrast down it's going to be not quite as pronounced and you could actually set the, in this case, you could set the direction just to Z because I really only want to extrude on the Z. And finally, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and add a smooth modifier at the end. Same thing, I can do this just in the Z direction. Crank this up to like 15, maybe 25. And that will smooth out some of that jaggedness that we we're getting at the top. Probably even more than that, honestly. And just like that, we now have a pretty great looking floor plane that I can use. So because it's tileable, you're also able to go into the UV editor and start editing this. If I were to scale this up and let's just say scale it three times the size, you'll also see that the displace modifier also updates, which is great because uh, again, we use the UV map for the texture coordinates. One important thing to note, all of the images that you produce using Dream Textures are packed into your Blender file. So if you wanted to save any of these for reuse elsewhere, like cobblestone wet, you need to make sure you go to image, save as, sorry, and select a place on your hard drive you want that to live. And then that way, if you wanna reuse it in another project, um, you're not heading back to this Blender file trying to unpack it. So anyways, a uh, quick and dirty walkthrough of Dream Textures. I think it's an incredible tool that has a lot of potential to speed up your workflow, generate new ideas, and honestly just have some fun. So I hope you enjoyed and we'll see you next time.